Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to be doing some clarinet swedging. Uh, we've got our clarinet guru in the house, Leroy, and Leroy's going to show you all about clarinet swedging today. Before we get to that, we do have a couple of winners. Uh, today's winner on YouTube. Uh, if you take the hashtag clarinet swedging, put that in the comments below. Thank you for making that more clear, sir. Uh, <laughs> you are going to be entered in to uh, win 10% off any of the courses that we have or $50 off of our clarinet work fixture, not clarinet work fixture, ultimate woodwind work fixture, excuse me. We do have a lot of courses coming up in 2023. Some of these are virtual, some of them are in person. So check out the education portion of our website for that. Uh, so take clarinet swedging, put that in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and we will get you your prize. The winner for this week is going to be uh, Don Kelly. Right. Don, congratulations. Send me an email to richardmusicmedic.com and we'll get you a discount code for any of the courses or we'll get you $50 off the ultimate woodwind work mm -hmm. fixture. The Another thing about the courses, you can see at the very top here on October 3rd, that's on Monday, just a few days away, we do have a couple of spots left for our engraving course and I have discounted this uh, by 50%. So it's really super affordable right now. So if you are in the North Carolina area and you'd like to come down and take the engraving course, or if you're looking to get out of Florida for a couple of days. I wonder uh, why you'd want to do that right now. Just come on up here, <laughs> get settled in. Uh, hotels are cheap up here right now. And you can take the engraving course for uh, just a couple of bucks. Um, this is also the last week, Leroy, of Saxtember. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, Already? It, it went by fast. That was quick. Uh, so this is the last week where we have kind of these amazing discounts on our new and vintage saxophones yep. at musicmedic.com. So check out the vintage restored saxophones or our new saxophones at Music Medic. And I have the vintage horns priced at below market right now for all for this week. And then those are going to end on uh, September 30th, this Friday. So check those out. Uh, all right. So Leroy, we've got... Uh, we've got more clarinet courses coming up. We've yeah. got more clarinet stuff that we're doing. We're going to have you on uh, more. And so today we're doing some clarinet swedging. Yes. And I want to ask you just very broadly, in general, why do we swedge clarinet keys? Good question. And um, I'm sure Ryan would answer this the same way for saxophone stuff. It's, it's basically to make sure the key wear is better, the sealing of the pads is better, the overall mechanics of the instrument are, will be better just because everything is nice and snug. And actually the instrument will vibrate better too. Cool. Okay, good. So let's get into it. What are the tools we need for this job? Okay, so in front of me, we have a plethora of things. So we have our Nipex small swedging pliers. Uh, we've got our, my regular Nipex duckbill pliers. Got a couple screwdrivers, um, some pipe cleaners, a collet swedger, uh, just in case you need to get into some smaller areas, and our standard blue handled um, swedgers with a thin tip, and these are the 3.5 millimeter opening. I also noticed that you have uh, right below me when I disappear in a second, uh, <laughs> you have the hinge tube cutter set. Yes. Um, are we going to need that for today, or is that for something else? Uh, both. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna reference it. We're not gonna go over the whole process of it, but it. This tool or similar is involved in the process. Okay. So we'll brush on part of it. Okay. So what are the most commonly swedged areas on clarinet? Uh, there's a few sections. The most. One of the main ones we're gonna go over today is this section right here, the the side or the trill keys. Uh, we're gonna focus on one of them today. The other ones that are pretty bad sometimes are the, the levers on the lower joint. And I know it's not a swedging thing, but just key work in general, the ring key on the lower joint as well. Okay. So maybe we'll get to the ring keys in a, in a future video. Absolutely. Um, so what key are we going to work on today? We are going to work on the side B flat, E flat key, which is right here. Mm. Um, this, I mean, if you're a clarinet player or even a double or anything like that, this key gets used a lot and then the other thing that sometimes happens is um, if kids are using it sometimes this key sticks out as you can see and gets damaged and hit and bumped a lot which can flare out the hinge tube and create needed key work okay so how do we fix the play in this e-flat b-flat key so the first thing that i would that i would do obviously is check to see if there's any movement uh, one way or the other so i'm going to just kind of i mean that's a little 
That's a little, I'm sure you guys can see that. Yep. It's a little bit small, but that's a little, that's a little on the excessive no bueno side. Um, so what I'll do is check that movement, but then I'll also check the movement between the actual posts themselves. So I'll actually just grab the key and try to wiggle it back and forth that way. So what I'm getting is there's movement from what I'm feeling. It feels like the hinge rod is loose in the tube, but the post fitting isn't too bad. There's a little bit of movement. So there's a couple things that have to be addressed. So what I'll do at this point is I'll take that key off. Just take a take one of the screwdrivers and take that off. Pick up the handy dandy. These are my most trusted pliers on my bench. Nipex tuck bills. Okay. Those are great, man. So now, now that I have those two pieces and parts out, pick this up. <laughs> I will put that back into the key. And then what I'm gonna so what I'm doing at this point now is seeing how bad the movement the rod is within the key itself. So I'll do like a north, so I'll do a north-south, then I'll do like an east-west. So you got the rod in the hinge tube. Correct. This. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's easier to see. Yeah, let me I will move this and that out of the way so we can kind of get on this side so we can kind of see it a little bit better. So so I got the hinge, I got the rod in there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm basically trying to wiggle it within the hinge tube itself. It's something that you really can't see, unfortunately, on camera. But from feeling it, there's a lit, like a little bit of movement between the hinge tube and the hinge rod. So if you kind of like visualize this, if there's small movement here in the center, the farther you go out, the more movement is going to be on the on each point. So tiny movement here, bigger movements here. Okay. So you're just trying to eliminate all that movement in, in that small area. So what I'll do at this point is I'll, I will try and I'll, and I'll say why I'm using that word here in a second. I'll try to use my Nipex pliers because those are my preferred method and preferred pliers. So these are the Nipex small. Yes. Gotcha. And I've already, I've already done and know what hole I need. So I do need the middle hole. All right. So I will go on there and then basically what I will be doing is if you look really carefully, I do it. There is plenty of room in there which is great. So what I will do is I'll basically grab that key and I'll, I'll pull those pliers together and swedge it, so release, you, rotate, and then pull together and swedge it again. So you're squeezing the pliers to compress over the hinge rod. Correct. Uh, and then you're le releasing and then letting, and then rotating. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That is the, that is I'll say the preferred method. Okay. Um, if for some reason, um, you're having a difficult time and you're going over it a bunch of times. Um, clarinet, the keys most of the time are either nickel plated or sometimes they're German silver, which is mm -hmm. also nickel. Um, you'll have to get a little more aggressive and I hate to use that word, but it's, okay. it, but it is a little bit more of an invasive thing where you basically do the same thing where you, you grab that hinge tube, pull the pliers together and then rotate at the same time. Before, uh, can you show them just the standard swedging technique one more time? Maybe Absolutely. exaggerate it a little bit so they can Absolutely. see it. Absolutely. So we'll take that. So there's the hinge tube. We'll push it together, release it, rotate it, find another spot, squeeze it again, release it, rotate it. Okay. And you're going to do that all the way around yeah, the uh, circumference of the hinge tube? Yes. Gotcha. And then release, and then you're good to go. The important part, the important thing to do is as you're doing this is to make sure that the hinge tube actually still moves freely within that, um, sorry, the hinge rod moves freely within that hinge tube. If for some reason it doesn't, you've either ovalized that tube or you've bent it and then you're all kinds of weird stuff and you have to fix it from there. So what about the swedging technique where you need to have a little more um, force? A little more force. Um, I will actually use these for that only because, um, and I'll explain why I said if on these okay. pliers, is that if you look at, I will grip these, I will grip this key again, and I will hold it up here. So if you look really carefully, the, the hinge rod is actually not perpendicular to the key itself. The key is that it's kind of at an angle. So this creates a couple problems. One, clearance issues and everything else. And two, the, the key itself is actually smaller. Uh, than most saxophone keys. So like if I pick up this saxophone key over here, one, it's bigger, and two, 
I will just kind of hold this like this, but it's perpendicular to the actual key itself. So the hinge tube's perpendicular to the, the key arm. Correct. Okay. Which makes swedging a lot easier and it gives you a little bit more room as far as clearance goes, which makes using these like you can do it on pretty much everything on saxophone. Um, for clarinet, you can use these for a lot of things on clarinet, but not everything. Um, this, this key is, um, you can do the, I'll say the, the, the swedge release, rotate swedge mo um, movement pretty well with these because you, because you can tell if you're, if you have room or not, but if you're trying to rotate while you're doing it, these are probably the best bet. So those are the Music Medic Blue Handled, and they're called the Thin Jaw. Correct. So I will show you the difference here. So if you look at the two jaws, so this is the Nipex. And the Nipex, a little, little, little fatter. Little, more yeah, width little to bit it. little bit fatter. Yep. So you'll have a little bit more room to work with these, which is great when you have, I'll say, a small amount of room to work in the first place. So if we're going to do the, I'll say, the, the swedging while you're, so if I'm gripping and swedging, so I basically just do that, and then I will rotate while I'm gripping the plier. Now, is there a chance that that's going to leave some marks on the key? It, it, it could. Okay. Um, the, the way to help eliminate that is to make sure that your tools are clean, make sure the key is clean, and even sometimes buffing the inside of that area is important. Okay. Um, will, it, will it leave marks? I, don't wanna, I can't say no because it probably will. The important part is to make sure that it doesn't leave like grooves, gouges, and that kind of thing. Because when you're elongating a tube, or if you're changing the diameter of the hinge tube, it's going to look different. So I mean, you're you're I'll say you're fixing a problem. So it's kind of like, do you want it to look all super great, or do you want it to actually be functional? And usually, I'll say a hybrid of both is the best, but functional is usually the better way to go. Okay. So once you have the key swedged, yep. whether it be with the large or the thin swedging plier, Correct. what's our next step? Um, so basically, you have to make sure that it'll actually fit on the instrument or the f between the post well. But you'll also want to check the, the movement of the hinge rod and the hinge tube itself again. So you'll do like a north, south, east, west again. It actually feels pretty good. So at this point, what I would do is check and see how it feels between these two posts. And it actually is sliding in there still pretty easily. What I would do at that point is take the key back off, take the, take the rod, put it back in that hinge tube, and, and keep going around with the swedging pliers to, to get it to the point where it will either not go between the posts or it will go between the posts very firmly. Um, at that point, you're basically, like we always like to say, over swedging the key. Okay. So that's where, that's where this tool comes in. And again, just kind of touching base on this is um, when, you swedge, when you swedge the tube, the, the edge of that tube will not be flush, will not be flat, because you don't know exactly how evenly that swedge of the material is. So that's where the, the cutter set will come into play. You'll get the pilot, so you'll get the correct pilot, you will put that in there, and then with a small amount of force pushing on there, you would basically just push and then you would just turn it and you release and then as and then make sure as you're putting it back in the instrument you're looking for a a very nice snug fit in between the two posts okay and we'll also go over facing and fitting a post on clarinet in a, in a in future a, video yep absolutely okay cool so the the goal so you basically have to go back and forth a couple times uh, to make sure that that's the fitting is the way it is. I have, okay. I have prepped one and spent some time on this one to, I'll say, to demonstrate what it should look like when you're done. So I'm going to do the same test. I'll grab this and then basically try to move it. There is no movement on that key. The key feels great, smooth movement. There's no, um, there's no play in the hinge tube itself with the rod, and there's no play between the two posts either. So this will create the the optimal seal on the pad on the body best feel for playability and it'll actually and it'll also help create less wear on the key as time goes on wow okay well leroy thank you for that excellent demonstration i got a couple of questions regarding yeah, wedging um 
but I think what we're going to do is just kind of move on from there uh, next and we'll kind of address some of the more idiosyncrasies, keys that are hard to, uh, that have clearance issues yeah. or trill keys that are stacked inside each other. Let's do that in a future video. Absolutely. Uh, next week we're going to be back with Leroy. We're going to be doing carbon fiber banding uh, under the tenon. That's an advanced technique and Leroy's going to show you that as well. Uh, make sure you take the hashtag clarinet swedging and put that in the comments <laughs> below. We're going to enter you into to the prize to win 10% off any of the courses that are coming up next week or $50 off of the ultimate woodwind fixture which is going to be uh, having its introductory price uh, kind of change at the end of this month so make sure that you get in on that like share and subscribe uh, we will see you guys next time and uh, happy repairing